Hey, what's up, Scott Balkan here with Imagination Creation Films, and today, well, we're going through the new Red Komodo 1.2 firmware that just got released. Well, tomorrow you'll 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 see this if if you have a Komodo. Yeah. So before we dive in here to the new menu system, there's gonna be a generic walkthrough of the whole menu system based with the new firmware so you can see all the cool features that it has. Uh, I wanna take a moment to ask, go ahead and click subscribe, give us a thumbs up, all that good stuff, share, love all the video. Uh, and remember, be nice down in the comment section because I do moderate it. I don't, I don't allow trolling. I mean, it just, it doesn't serve anybody. But you know, be an active participant, be, be, be cool. Also. Uh, if you want to support me, yeah, links down below. So let's dive in right here and get going in this camera. Let's run through the menu here of everything on the Komodo, including what's new on the new 1.2 firmware, which is still beta, by the way. So first off, as you're familiar, we have down here at the bottom, we can change our frame rates. That is just a simple slide, very kind of Apple-ish feel. And then uh, we have our ISO setting right here. You can just scroll it instantly and easily and just tap to leave. Uh, this is where your aperture would be. I have the Tekina 11 to 20 on here, which is a manual lens, so there's not available. And then uh, shutter speed right here, same way, you can change it. And then your color temperature for your white balance. Now, what we have here are some new cool features. Notice the audio pane. We click on the audio. Now you have access to your microphone gain. You can do it right here. You can link them so that everything's easy. You got your headphone right there. You can switch between external and internal. Currently right now you can't record both at the same time, but who knows, maybe here in the future. Uh, and then you can also choose from none. Uh, just tap menu to come back. And over here we have our stop lights, which everyone is familiar with. Um, before I click into that, uh, right here you have your time code as well as your clip ID and information, and you click on that, you get your histogram for exposure. So let's click on the stoplights. Now, if you notice, we have LCD guides and we have SDI guides, which means you can turn on the guides for both your LCD and your external monitor. You have LCD tools, so now these tools will either go both to the LCD or the SDI. So notice we have edge, we can turn it on here or we can turn it on on both or flip-flop them, whatever you like. Um, we have peaking, we have focus assist, we have exposure assist, and then false color, as well as zebra modes one and two, which you can configure in the menu and we'll go to that in just a moment. Don't forget, you can also magnify for pulling focus. You can do it on the LCD or on the SDI as well. So that's perfect for just getting that perfect focus. Let's go ahead and get that edge in there. Nice. Excellent work. Now up here, we have uh, an expanded menu. Now it actually shows you, uh, I'm on firmware 1.2. Uh, it tells you the format that you're in. It tells you the lens that you're on, if your lens communicates. Um, it has all of this just like it did before, as well as your temperature and calibration. But it also now will tell you which model brand of card you have in there. And it knows exactly. But if you notice that time remaining, it, uh, that's new too. Also, did you happen to notice we now have our ability to see our guides and our tools on the SDI as well. Let's go into the menu. So under here, under image, we can adjust our ISO just as before. We can adjust our shutter. We can adjust our white balance. Uh, you can also do an auto white balance if you'd like. You can also set up uh, color temperature presets in here. So if you want to just use the ones for the actual tungsten, daylight, all that good stuff, you can do that. Um, let's back out. Uh, output color space, so we're in Rec. 709, but you can go to red wide gamut, which is just full on log. And yeah, it's pretty pretty log. Then uh, you can do Rec. 2020, you can do DCI-P3. I prefer to be in Rec. 709. And then we have the output 
tone map right here, which is where you would set up high, low, medium contrast, or none. It just depends on what you want to look. And this is your IPP2 settings, as well as your highlight roll off from very soft all the way to hard and, and even none. And uh, you know, that changes your look ever so slightly. You can see it up here. And then you can output for SDR, HDR, or hybrid log gamma. In addition, you can load up 3D LUTs in here and you can turn them on and you can apply them instantly. There are several and you can apply it in camera. You can apply it from your media itself, which I have none on there. And you can turn that off as well. Um, and you have your CDL, which allows you to adjust things like your, your slope, offset, saturation, all that good stuff. You can do all of that in there. And you also have exposure adjust if you want to push your exposure in camera. Again, it's raw, so it doesn't really matter. Let's back out one. Let's go to project settings. So in here, we now have a couple more options in here. Still not everybody's favorite options everywhere, but we do get... Uh, 2K17.9, 4K17.9, 5K17.9, 6K16.9, 2.4.1, and then 17.9. I just like to shoot open gate. And then the frame rates, those haven't changed yet. And again, there's not going to be any faster frame rates, any higher speed. It's just not going to be possible. So you get basically 40, 39.96 if you're in 23.97 time frame, timeline, project base, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then 40 would be if you're in a 24. Uh, and then your project time base, you can change this all the way up to 60, uh, but you won't get 60 out of 5K or out of 6K. So keep that in mind. Um, file format, you can change that from ProRes to R3D. Keep in mind when you change it to ProRes, it will have to reformat your card. And now here's a beauty right here. We have high quality, medium quality, and now with the new firmware, low quality. And this works out to be about two to one, four to one, an eight to one compression ratio, which gives you, uh, at the top you can see 117, if you have a 512 card like I do, 512 gig, you get a one hour and 17 minutes record time on it, on low quality. In medium quality, you get 37, and in high quality, you get 30. Now, that all also depends on the format that you're in, so if you go to a lower format, so if you're shooting in, let's say, 4K 16 by 9, well, 4K 17 by 9, all of a sudden we're getting two hours and 53 minutes in low quality. That allows you to shoot a long time. And that's pretty nice. Also, if you are switched into ProRes, you can change your resolution, your quality, and whether or not you want to bake in your LUT or your uh, red, white gamut uh, settings for your log, et cetera. We also now have the ability to do pre-record which means it's going to be continuously recording to your card the whole time. And when you press the record button, it's going to lock in from that point forward plus the two seconds before. And you can change that to whatever you like. So if you want to keep four seconds pre-record going, it's just going to continuously record. This is great for wildlife. Uh, Vince LaFerre said babies, which is perfect because... Babies really just do things when they want, and also puppies, dogs, cats, that kind of stuff. So pre-record is now in the new firmware, and it is nice. And then we have our slate right here. Um, let's go back to audio and timecode. Uh, again, you can change your, your input source here, just like you could from the main screen. Uh, and internal audio, here's your gain settings. Um, you can link them. Uh, which is the same as that first menu, and then external audio would be there if I had that turned on. If I switch it here to external, now it goes to external. Um, again, you can't record both at the same time. Headphone volume level there. Time code source, you can change internal, external, no big deal, standard. Uh, jam, jam time code, right there. Click OK. Display time code, right there. Uh, you have your two options. Let's go back. And now let's go to monitoring. So here we start to have some more fun. LCD, uh, you can change your brightness. You can also have a LUT applied or not. It's whatever you would like to have to your LCD. That is this monitor, not this one. You can turn off your guides or your tools, whichever you'd like. 
then we go to SDI. So here you can change your frequency, your resolution, basically what you're outputting. Um, you change your frequency there, you're at a LUT, you can have guides and tools, but also overlay. You can turn that off. That, watch this, comes right back up, and you have a clean feed, uh, minus the guides, which you, know, you turn on or off right here, um, but you can have overlay. Now the overlay comes in two options. Um, that is option one, which is simple, which is just gonna give you your time code and your uh, clip number, or you go advanced, which is very familiar for folks in the red world, uh, and I don't know how you keep from tapping the screen, I'm quite used to it, but that brings up basically an overlay, just like yesteryear, which is pretty fantastic, actually. Um, in live stream, we can turn it on and we can change our quality from low, medium, and high. And why you might, might want to do that is if you uh, go with a lower quality, you'll get more range. Tools. We have our false color, which we can enable. We can change it to video mode or exposure mode, whichever you like. And then we have peaking, which you can turn on, set it to edge, focus, peaking, whichever you like. Your color as well, you can configure down below if you are doing um, peaking. You can change it to cyan, white, magenta. I'm a yellow guy myself. Um, yeah, turn that on there. Then we have log view, which you can turn on, which gives you absolute log. Pretty loggy. Pretty loggy. Let's turn off the false color. There we go. There's very log. And then you can configure your two zebras right here. So you can do it via IRE. And then... You can have a second one right there for lower, which is great for pulling skin tone if you don't want to use false color. Set your IRE to 40, 48 on there. And then when you get nice skin in there, look at there. I'm perfectly in, in exposure. Isn't that sweet? Not really. It's, it's a zebra. But you get those two configurations there, and you can trigger those from the front as well. Let's go into guides. We have frame guide one, two, and three, and center guide. So frame guide one, you can set it up however you like. They have a bunch of presets in there, or you can configure it yourself, whichever you want. You just configure it, turn on the amount of scale and how offset you want it, and turn it on or off. You can set up three different frame guides. As well, you can set up your center guide, which in this case is a cross, uh, you can change that cross to a bright cross if you like. Um, you can also change it to a small dot, medium dot. Uh, I like the cross myself, that's, that's my thing, that's my jam. Um, so this is really helpful having three frame guides. This allows you to actually frame up 16 by nine and nine by 16 at the same time. It's really nice. You can do that right there. And then we're going to go down to media. And in media, you can eject your media. This gives you your media info. It will tell you, again, the brand that you have, the firmware version of it, how much capacity you have left, how much time you have remaining, all of that. Uh, you also can format right here. To format, you click on it, and then you would click OK. You can assign your reels and all that good information. And you click OK, then confirm, and you are formatting. Next comes presets. And this is new and cool. This allows you to create a preset on your camera that is specific to your needs. So if you want to recall certain things over and over again, like let's say you want to shoot slow motion and tungsten, or you want to shoot um, regular uh, 2398 in daylight, that kind of stuff, you can set your ISO, you can set your shutter, you can set all of these functions. If you have LUTs that you want to turn on and off, every little thing in there you can turn on. So you set it up. Let's see, we'll set the project time base. So anything that's checked will overwrite a setting in the camera when you select it. So we're gonna say, okay. We're gonna call this test. We're gonna spell it right. We are not gonna spell it right. There we go. And then we're gonna click okay. And we've created a preset. That preset is now on the camera. If we go in there, we can Click the 
and click apply. And it will apply that. Now all the settings have been changed. If we had, um, let's go back here and let's change our ISO. Let's change it up to 3200, which is ugly. Let's change this down to tungsten. Uh, let's go 3200. There we go. Now we're going to go back in here. We're going to go to presets and we're going to do create a preset. And we're going to do, we want to do ISO, shutter, and we're going to do white balance. Yep. And we're going to say, okay. We're going to say tongue, tug. We're going to misspell it. And I've created it. So now if we go to in camera presets, we now can go to TU, which is the one I had, or we can go to test. Now, test did not save the, um, the, the white balance. So let's go in here real quick and let's set this white balance. We didn't save that one in there and we'll go back and change it. 5600, okay. Presets, create a preset. Uh, we're not going to do all. We're going to do ISO, shutter, white balance, color temperature. Okay. There we go. And we're going to call this day. Okay. So now we have the two presets. So we go to in-camera presets, and we say day. We're already there. So let's go to tungsten. Apply that. Boom. We've applied it. Go to day. Apply it. Boom. We've applied it. So you can set up all kinds of stuff, all your guides, uh, how you like your camera configured. You can save that as a preset and recall them rapidly, quickly. You can export them to media. It's awesome. Really awesome. <coughs> Autofocus uh, on this lens right here. Um, I don't have a autofocus lens on there. I've used the Sigma. It works really, really well. Um, but it would give you information about your lens in there. Communication, this is for your camera. Uh, it's your name of it. And then your Wi-Fi, you would configure your Wi-Fi, uh, whether or not you're doing a ad hoc or an infrastructure. If you're an infrastructure, you're, you're joining an existing Wi-Fi or ad hoc is your own. Uh, people have asked what the default password is. It's listed on here with, as your serial number. You can change it. You just, just go in here. We'll say, we're going to do ad hoc. Say, okay, change this. Um, you can see my passphrase. If I just want to change that right there. And I can just delete that and change it to one, two, three, four. It's one, one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three. There we go. And there's my passphrase. You can change your wireless uh, frequency, uh, depending on where you're at, and your channel as well. And there's your IP address, and you can connect to that directly from a web browser as well. So that is how you connect with ad hoc and infrastructure. Uh, you would do the same thing. You click here, and then you would join the SSID that you have. It doesn't have a browse function, but you can just type in the one that is there and you can connect to it with the passphrase. And this is your MAC address right here. Now we have serial communications and that would be for connecting through the external port. Then down at the bottom, we have system settings. System settings, you can change your date and time right here. And everybody knows how to do that and to which time zone you're in. We have the lens information. It would give you that information if it is an intelligent lens. This Dakina is just a uh, cinema lens, so it doesn't do that. It also supports image stabilization. Fan control, you have two options. You have quiet and adaptive. I run mine on adaptive, but if you're super concerned about uh, noise, and, and these fans are not loud at all. They're much quieter than even DSMC2. Um, run it in quiet while you're recording, and then when you're done, switch it to adaptive, and that way it will uh, cool it back down. But I mean, honestly, it does a pretty good job with uh, both of the settings. And then power, it will give you the information of your, um, your voltages. So I'm not plugged into DC power, so it doesn't give me that. But it's telling me my battery remaining, telling me my time remaining on each, it's telling me my draw, uh, all of the above from all the batteries, which is nice. Indicators, you have your tally lamp, wipe lamp, same thing. Um, 
and then we have system settings. So on here, we can change from angle to time on our uh, shutter speed. We can change our aperture increments from a quarter to a third stop. We can change our focus from imperial to metric, and we can change our white balance from Kelvin to presets. I'm, I'm a Kelvin guy. You, you be who you, you do you. And then the last thing here is system status. And in here, it will give you your serial number and the version of your, um, your firmware and your runtime, and that is new as well. And then the temperature of the camera will tell you everything um, right here. Finally, we go back to language. They now have the ability to change to Chinese, German, several other languages, which is nice if you are from other countries or you speak those languages natively. Uh, finally, here in maintenance, calibration is for black shading. So when you black shade, remember, see up here at the top, Right here, you have the T and E, and that is for temperature and exposure. If those are green, you don't need to black shade. You're good. But you want to black shade when temperature changes drastically. So um, if, as long as your T and E is green, you are fine. If not, you need to put a lens cap, a good solid lens cap over the front. And then I always put a bag or something else over it just for extra protection. And then you'll click OK and you will uh, save the calibration itself. And you can choose your calibration uh, that you have saved. And you can save the logs for, um, for red if you have a problem. You can reset your defaults, factory reset, and upgrade is where you do firmware upgrades. Right now, firmware upgrades, you copy it to your CFAST card, you plug it in, you boot up, you go to upgrade, you click it, and then there's a three reboot cycle that happens. And the, the last reboot cycle, it'll ask you to reboot. And that's all you need to do to upgrade your firmware. Soon, you'll be able to upgrade over your app on your RED control. That is a huge game changer. Uh, so yep, to record, you can tap the button there or on the side. I mean, it is it's cool. It's really cool. That is the entire menu walkthrough with firmware 1.2 that is going to be out tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, for all the Stormtrooper people. So I hope that was a great overview for you. I hope it was a fantastic overview for you. I hope you got a lot out of that menu. They have been doing so much work on this camera, and I mean, there's a lot more coming, but this camera is really shaping up. It is, it is phenomenal what they've done. Ooh, do you like the, uh, do you like the rig? Look at that. That is, um, yeah, that's, uh, what, what do you think about the rig down below? I mean, this, the handles are, are just kind of in a weird location, but I, I mean, I kind of dig this because I'm, I'm carrying it around like this, keeping it small and light, but it's uh, very configurable because of uh, this down here, which, ooh, look at that. Ooh, there are 15 millimeter lightweight rod. Yeah, let me know what you think about that down in the comment section down below. But, you know, I, I really hope you got a lot out of this review. Not review, but, you know, I mean, the walkthrough. Um, I really do hope so. Uh, it, it, is, it is just it is phenomenal what they have been doing with this camera. And it's, I, I can't wait to show you what it can do in the future. I mean, it is pretty phenomenal. Oh, 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 oh. Um, looks like I need to make a quick getaway here. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, share it with all your friends. If you want to support me, if you want to give me a cup of coffee, there's a little applaud button down there. Just click that and then, you know, yeah, applause and it sends me $2. I, I, you know, I appreciate that kind of stuff. You can support me down below and, you know, stay safe out there, be good. And as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. Bye guys. <laughs>